So I put out a guide on where you should base, but I never put out a guide detailing how you should base. There are tons of small things here and there that you can and should focus on in a base, and there are a lot of common denominators when it comes to what goes into a good base design. But ultimately, it's up to you on what you want in your base and where you want it. So with that disclaimer out of the way, here are the bare necessities for making a base and don't starve together. As far as crafting stations go, it's somewhat obvious, but also a very important category to cover. There are a total of 9 different crafting stations that you can put in your base assuming that you're playing at any non-specific point in time. These include the Science Machine, which unlocks the first tier of Science, the Alchemy Engine, which unlocks the second tier of Science, the Prestahatitator, which unlocks the first tier of Magic, the Shadow Manipulator, which unlocks the second tier of Magic, the Bookcase, which is a Wicker-only item, this unlocks the second tier of science and allows Wicker to prototype most of her books. This also has 20 slots for storing her books and causes books to regenerate durability at a rate of 1% per second. This is ultimately strictly better than the Alchemy Engine, so it's definitely something worth setting up if you are playing Wicker. The Think Tank unlocks the Seafaring tier of crafting. This is used to access the ocean content. The Tackle Receptacle unlocks a Fishing tier of crafting. This is used to go fishing in the ocean primarily. The Terra Firma Tamper allows you to craft most turfs in the game. You have to unlock the crafting station by completing the puzzle in the archives. The Celestial Orb is unique on this list in that you don't craft it and place it down. This is something that you find after the Suspicious Boulder spawns in your world, and you can use it to access the first tier of the Celestial Tab, and later the second tier once you kill Celestial Champion. This will grant you the recipes available at the Celestial Altar, Tribute, and Sanctum, which are crafting stations, but they're locked into Lunar, so I'm not going to be covering them for base design. You really just want the orbs, since you can't prototype anything in the Celestial tab, and making the trips to Lunar Island every time you want an item usually isn't worth the time or the inconvenience, but once you upgrade the orb, it becomes a significantly better option, though it is late game since it requires you to kill Celestial Champion in the first place. Nevertheless, the orb should ideally be present in your base, as it does allow you to swap characters at any given point with the Celestial Idols and the Portal Paraphernalia. As far as all the previously mentioned crafting stations on the list, some are simply better than others. For example, the Alchemy Engine is a better version of the Science Machine, and the Shadow Manipulator is a better version of the Prestahatitator, and the other crafting stations don't really have a better version of them, but as far as the Science Machine and Prestahatitator go, you're perfectly fine to just hammer down the Science Machine and Prestahatitator once you get their upgraded versions. There are some structures that are seasonal specific, as in they're only available during real life seasons. The Masonry Oven is an example of this, and it's a crafting station that's available in Winter's Feast, while the Mad Scientist Lab is available during the Hallowed Nights. The Year of event introduces different crafting stations, in which you use the lucky gold nuggets that are dropped during the event in order to get new items. These are also nice to have when you're playing during the event, or you have the event enabled, but they aren't necessary in a world, so you don't have to stress about them. So the TLDR for the crafting stations you want are the Alchemy Engine and the Shadow Manipulator. These are the bare minimum that people always have in a base, as these give you access to most recipes. The Think Tank is also recommended, as that allows you access to ocean content with relative ease. Crafting stations are good and pretty straightforward, but there is also the important factor of what resources you should have in your base to make survival easier and more beneficial to you. I'm going to be assuming that you aren't doing anything too crazy when setting up a base, so I'm going to assume that you don't have things like boss drops or Moonkey Island items, though I will touch on Lunar stuff. It's always recommended that you have a couple resources nearby that would make your life significantly easier. These items tend to be used in most crafting recipes that you frequently go back to, and will help you out with managing your well-being. Grass is probably one of, if not the most demanded resource throughout the entirety of the game, due to rope being used frequently and throughout. Twigs are also used pretty frequently since twigs are used in the crafting of most tools, as well as making some structures and the like. It's a good idea to have easy access to both of these, as they are the bread and butter of what you should bring back to a base. Logs and boards are also used in things that players tend to go back to, whether that be docks, chests, fuels for fires, and the ice fling matic While you can use birch nut trees for logs, I'd recommend you use pine cones since pine trees yield double the amount of pine cones at their full stage throughout every season, whereas birch nuts only yield double the amount in half the year. There's also the matter of tree guards, where I think, personally, normal tree guards are easier to deal with than poison birch nuts. Stone fruit bushes are also one of the best sources of food and can yield in rocks. Rocks are very useful throughout the game as cut stone and rocks are used in large quantities at most every point in the game. 
early on they're used for most structures and late game they're used in large quantities for things like cobblestone and docks. You should definitely add more to these things depending on what you want and what you use the most. It's never a bad idea to add more grass tufts if you find yourself needing more grass, and adding things like spiders nearby will help with silk and spider glands, as well as yielded monster meat. While I did touch on rock fruit as a food source, I think it's important to go through other varieties and consistent methods of obtaining food. Berry bushes are the quick and easy forms of filler for crock pots, as berries can be left on the stem for an indefinite amount of time until you need them to refill your hunger. This goes nicely with meat as it can help with quick and easy meatballs. Kelp is also a great source of food in the crock pot as it can be used for filler and takes up a very small amount of space when set up properly. The way to do that is you can push kelp into one area using a boat, which will result in the kelp all being stacked on one location, meaning that you could just sit there and pick a ton for easy food. Meat sources are quite varied in how you get them, but the two primary ones that I'm going to go over are the pig farms and the spider farms. I touch on pig farms in my most essential farm videos, as well as spider farms, so go watch that if you haven't and want to learn more about it. But I'll cover the benefits and the basics real quick. Pig farms require you to set up a bait pen in order to keep the pigs out during all stages of the day. It's recommended that you kill these on a full moon, because it yields in guaranteed pig skin and meat. Spider farms serve as a pretty consistent form of monster meat, and monster meat goes great with fillers as it can be used as a quick and easy way to get meatballs. Gardening is the old reliable plant seeds grow crop. Gardening is very complicated and like the pig and spider farms, I have a video on that that you could watch, so go check that out if you want to. But the long and short of this is you plant a seed, it'll grow into food, and if the plant is happy enough, you'll get seeds out of it in addition to the crop itself, so you can plant even more seeds. As far as food structures go, there are some structures that are highly recommended for you to have in a base, and they tend to be the thing that separates experienced players from newer players. The icebox does wonders for any food situation, since it'll just extend the time your food lasts, and give you one centralized location to go for for your food. The salt box is an indirect upgrade to the icebox, as it extends the time that food lasts for even longer than an icebox would, with the trade-off being that you can't store everything in a salt box that you can in an icebox. The crockpot is the structure to have in your base, and the crockpot opens the doors to crockpot recipes, which will turn ingredients into more useful recipes. Drying racks grant tons of benefits to food that you hang on them. If you hang meat on them, they last significantly longer, and will also provide a little bit of bonus stats to health and sanity. Drying racks with kelp on them will also make the kelp yield in sanity, which is very useful in bulk. And while drying racks are good, they aren't necessary to have, and you shouldn't get too fixated on building them when you're setting up a base. Drying racks can get really pricey, really quickly, especially since you're going to want a lot depending on your meat supply or your kelp supply. The birdcage is used to turn meat into eggs and turn vegetables into seeds to grow even more vegetables. This is really useful because you could choose to cultivate whatever crop you want, as well as eggs being used in a lot of good crockpot recipes. Bee boxes are an incredibly good source of food, and it's basically the infinite honey exploit, and can help make things like honey hams and honey nuggets for good health and hunger. The hound defense is something that definitely helps tremendously as days go on and with multiple people in the server, and while hound defense is a pretty broad term, it's basically just any reliable method of getting rid of hounds. I'll go through some recommendations quickly. The Winona trap is something that I prefer, which I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but I have a video going over this, so if you want more details, go check it out. But long and short of it is, you use statues to block out hounds, and you use catapults to finish them off. Tooth traps are probably the most apparent way to deal with hounds. If you choose to go through with this method, you're going to want a big area dedicated to these traps, and you're going to want to set aside many other resources just to rebuild these once they lose durability. I wouldn't recommend these personally since they just take a ton of time, since they take a ton of time to replant and reset, and it's just the whole process that gets more and more annoying as time goes on. Houndiuses are probably the most expensive method to deal with hounds, these are basically Winona traps, but less effective, since you block out hounds with statues and use houndiuses to kill them off. This does require the guardian horn and the deer clops eyeball. Tentacles are aggressive towards most everything, same as hounds, so if you have a good patch, you'll be able to get the hounds caught on the tentacles pretty easily. You should never underestimate the effectiveness of a beefalo herd. If you run through a beefalo herd with hounds on you, the hounds will almost definitely aggro onto at least one beefalo and get dealt with incredibly quickly. While there are definitely other things I didn't mention, I do want to touch on certain things real quick because I think it's important to know certain things when it comes to the necessities of a base. 
As far as chests go, you don't need that many. It's perfectly fine to put things on the floor in their own designated piles. I'd recommend getting geometric drop and ground chest if you can, since these help with organization in their own way. Chests are primarily used for things that can be eaten, snatched up, or blow away. These include rocks and minerals, pigskins and eyeballs, and any other precious resource that you have a few of that you really want to keep safe. You should definitely not put tools in them since it tends to just be a waste of clutter. It's a lot better to just have them out on the floor in a designated pile, so that if anybody needs them, they can just swoop by and pick them up. The tent is a pretty good way to regenerate your health and sanity at the cost of hunger. While there are alternatives, they make for great safety nets if you need to regenerate your stats but lack some of the resources to do so. Fire pits are helpful to have, but not necessary all things considered. Usually there's a lot of coming and going in bases, so people tend to rely on lanterns for light and torches for heat, if not just using furnaces and lava pits. The same kind of can be said about endothermic fires, in which people tend to just go to base to swap out their thermal stone in an ice box. Flingomatics are basically a necessity if you're going to be on the surface during summer, anywhere that isn't the oasis. If you're planning on actually staying on the surface during the season, then flingomatics become your go-to method to deal with wildfires. Though personally, I'd just recommend disabling wildfires outright. I think they're a really big hindrance to people wanting to make their own unique base, but that's personal preference. So you come to your own conclusions. The lightning rod is a quintessential structure to have. If I had a nickel for every time I got lightning rod checked in this game, just have lightning rods covering your base. You know, their range is pretty big, they don't have durability on them, they're great, they're, like just make them, they're, they're really important, trust me. So there you have it, that's basically everything you'd need to establish a proper base. I'd recommend you try to expand on this as much as you can, getting more or less of these resources as you feel is necessary for your playstyle. If you find something that's especially useful to have near you, then definitely add that to your base list because the best base that you can make is whatever you make of it. If you feel like you could cut one part out of this or another, or just add something to it, then go for it. There's no such thing as a perfect base because it really just depends on each person and their play styles. Learn what you value and move upwards from there. Let me know if I missed out on anything or if there's anything that you find to be particularly useful in this. But that's all I really wanted to say about bases. So until next time, buh bye bye